the NFL has a long history. You would be shocked at some of the events that occurred in the past. If you're interested in hearing about some weird games and crazy scandals that the NFL has tried to hide from the public, <laughs> then stay with us. We're going to discuss everything from the time a woman tried out to play for a team to the weirdest substance banned by the league. Here are 20 things you didn't know about the NFL. In 2007, Dr. Bennett Omalu reached out to the NFL with his alarming research study findings. He was one of the earlier specialists that was looking at the effects of CTE, a disease that is caused by traumatic head injuries. What Dr. Omalu's research found was that CTE was a disease that would have dreadful long-term health repercussions that could be fatal to those suffering the disease. He also found that 99% of the brains he studied of people that had previously played NFL football had CTE. Even though the research he presented was compelling evidence, the NFL rejected it. The NFL's fears were that it would negatively affect revenues and they would be accountable for paying out lawsuits to players suffering from head injuries during retirement. They did everything they could to keep the research under wraps and also dismiss the integrity of Dr. Omalu in order to protect their own reputation. As time has passed, the side effects of CTE have become much more known to the public. Even so, the NFL still refuses to accept some studies that protect themselves from lawsuits. The NFL has been doing their players dirty. Is it that surprising though? The NFL dates back further than you might even realize. In 1946 was one of the biggest scandals in the league's history. A bookie and famous gambler named Alvin Paris bribed two of the New York Giants players to throw the championship game against the Bears. The players were named Merrill Hapes and Frank Filchuk. Both men were crucial members of the Giants' offense. Hapes was the starting running back and Filchok was the quarterback. Paris had a shady history and had been involved in other scandals in which he bribed college athletes to throw games so he could make profit on them. This, however, was his first attempt in the pro ranks. And he got busted. Both players accepted $2,500 in bribes, which would be worth about $41,000 today, from Alvin Paris, and when they were caught, they both got permanently suspended by NFL Commissioner Burt Bell. The Bears won the championship game 24-14. Wow, that is sketchy. Kudos to Commissioner Bell for kicking those lowlifes out of the league. Unfortunately, Bell had a sad and abrupt end to his tenure as NFL Commissioner. Burt Bell was loved and respected during his time as Commissioner of the NFL. His tenure lasted about 13 years, beginning in 1946 and ending in 1959. The end of his tenure ended prematurely and in a tragic fashion. Late in the fourth quarter of a match between the Steelers and Eagles, the Eagles scored a game-winning touchdown that caused a wild uproar in the stands. Within that uproar, the commissioner who was attending the game suffered a heart attack and passed away right in the stands. Damn, that game must have been pretty exciting if it literally caused the commissioner's heart to stop in the dying minutes. Bell was missed and his successor tried to commemorate him with a special game in his honor for the following decade. Pete Rozelle wanted to come up with an exciting way to improve the NFL while also paying homage to his successor, Commissioner Burt Bell. He thought that a third place game between the two teams that lost in the conference championship games would be a captivating event that could get viewership in anticipation of the championship game. He named the event the Burt Bell Benefit Bowl. Unfortunately, the players forced to participate in the event hated it. Vince Lombardi described the game as a loser's bowl for losers and a hinky dink football game held in a hinky dink town played by hinky dink players. Why don't you tell us how you really felt, Vince? Needless to say, the game was canceled before the 1970 season. The third place game may not have been Roselle's brightest idea. A lot of great things for football did occur though during his tenure as commissioner that lasted nearly 30 years. One decision he made was to move the field goal post from the front to the back of the end zone. Believe it or not, for many years the field goal post used to be planted right on the goal line at the front of the end zone. In retrospect, it sounds insane. Players were being blindsided and crashed into the post, causing serious injuries. Not only that, but kicking field goals was particularly easy, which made teams less willing to take risks to score touchdowns. It wasn't good for the game. Taking all these things into consideration, Commissioner Roselle decided to move the post to the back of the end zone and raise them to prevent injuries and encourage teams to attempt more touchdowns. 
The ruling was a big success and was a major step towards the exciting version of the NFL that we get to watch today. Scoring touchdowns is hard enough. Forget about trying to avoid a giant metal object in the field. But you know what isn't hard? Subscribing to our channel. All you've got to do is click the subscribe button. So what are you waiting for? Do it. But you know what was really easy? Scoring points against the New York Giants in 1966. In 1966, a game was played between the Redskins and the Giants that saw so many scores you would think you were watching a basketball game. The Redskins won 72 to 41. Holy dynamite, was every play a touchdown? It wasn't the only disastrous game the Giants were involved in that season. Those losers only won one game in the entire year. Even though the game in 1966 was the highest scoring game ever, it wasn't the biggest blowout ever. That record is held by two teams who crushed their opponents into dust. The biggest blowout ever is tied between two teams, the 1976 Rams and the 2009 Patriots. Both teams pulverized their opponents 59 to nothing. In 1976, the Rams scored seven rushing touchdowns led by Lawrence McCutcheon, who scored three of them. They also used all three quarterbacks on their roster to prevent injury, but one after the other, they just kept piling on the pain. The Rams beat the Falcons in total yardage 569 to 81. The other team who won a game 59 to nothing were the 2009 New England Patriots. When they dominated the Titans, it was a completely different game with an identical result. The Pats method was led by Tom Brady's aerial attack. He threw six touchdowns during the 2009 blowout, three of which to Hall of Famer Randy Moss. It's not surprising to see the Patriots hold such a record. They were dominant for so many years when they had Tom Brady as quarterback. But did you know that the Pats originally were supposed to have a different team name? When the Patriots moved from Boston to Foxborough, ownership wanted a name that represented the entire area and not just Boston. The first name proposed to the league was the Bay State Patriots. However, ownership presented the shortened version as the BS Patriots, which the NFL didn't approve of. Instead, the name was revised to be the New England Patriots and have become one of the most storied franchises in the league's history. The BS Patriots, you say? A lot of people might have argued that it would be a fitting name for an organization that got caught for deflating footballs in 2015 in order to win games. But our guess is that you already knew about Deflategate. What we think you might not know is that back in the early days, the football was a completely different shape. Did you know that until 1934, the shape of the NFL football was completely different? It was a lot rounder and didn't have points on the end like today. The reason the shape was changed was so quarterbacks could get a better grip and the football could be thrown further. One downfall of the reshaping was that drop kicks became a lot more difficult and are practically obsolete in today's game. They put so much work into catering a football for the quarterbacks and somehow it still wasn't up to the standards of Tom Brady. Even with knowledge of Brady's scandal, he is still considered the greatest player of all time. But maybe that's because most people don't know about the next player on our top 20 list. The NFL used to commonly use players in multiple positions. And it makes some sense. Could you imagine how good Aaron Donald would be on an offensive line or Adrian Peterson would be as a blitzing linebacker? But guys just don't do it anymore. Maybe that's why you could argue that what Sammy Baugh did during his career makes him one of the best football players ever. In 1943, Baugh played QB, DB, and punted for the Washington Redskins. He led the league in both passing touchdowns and interceptions. He played one game against the Detroit Lions that may need to be considered the greatest game ever. Slinging Sammy Baugh through four passing touchdowns, intercepted the ball four times, and executed an 81-yard punt all in the same game. Now that is just crazy. Sammy Baugh must have been wild to watch in his prime. I mean, an 81-yard punt? The guys today can't even kick that far. Baugh was one of the most exciting players ever, but he wasn't the biggest player ever. That title is held by Aaron Gibson. The biggest player in NFL history was an offensive lineman named Aaron Gibson. He only played 34 games in his career that spanned from 1999 to 2004, but boy was the fella massive. Aaron Gibson was listed at 6'6 six six and 410 pounds. For those of you who don't use these metrics, Gibson was over 2 meters tall and approximately 186 kilograms. I almost feel bad for the scale that they used to weigh him. Ay caramba. 
If Gibson was the biggest player, we know what you're wondering. Who was the smallest player in NFL history? Well, we had to go way back in time to answer that question at number 9. The smallest player to ever suit up in the NFL is Jack Soupy Shapiro. Though he only recorded stats in one regular season game during the 1929 season, it was still enough to keep this microman in the record books for almost 100 years. And I don't think his record is going to be broken anytime soon. Shapiro was listed at 5 feet and 1 inch and weighed 119 pounds. He was renowned in college as a punt returner and a running back who excelled as a lead blocker. He must have been running at guys' knees head first. It's clear that football players come in all different shapes and sizes, but how about genders? Did you know that a woman was invited to try out for the NFL? Well, it's true. In 2013, a female college athlete was given the opportunity to try out for the NFL as a kicker. She posted YouTube videos of her drilling field goals from long range and NFL scouts decided that they wanted to get a close look at what she was capable of. It was one of the most anticipated auditions in NFL history because no one knew what to expect. Unfortunately, Lauren Silberman completely choked on national television. She attempted two kicks, one went 19 yards and one went 13 yards. Ouch, that's cringy. The results were disappointing but it takes a lot of balls to even show up to an NFL tryout. Uh, oops, actually I mean, um, never mind. <clears throat> Let's just move on to this next one. Often kickers don't get the credit they deserve. It's not easy rocketing field goals with so much pressure. But one kicker was so good that he won the NFL MVP award. I'm dead serious. The year 1982 marked the only time that an NFL kicker has ever won the league's most valuable player award. Mark Mosley was the kicker for the Washington Redskins and had drilled an impressive 20 out of 21 attempted field goals for his team. The 1982 season was a weird one for the NFL. Due to a player strike, teams only played 9 games and some players sat out the entire season in protest. So, Maisley was voted the best of the remaining bunch. Kickers probably don't deserve MVP awards, that's a little extreme. But a good kicker is vital to an NFL team's success. Just ask the 1991 Buffalo Bills. Did you know that the Buffalo Bills hold the record for making it to four straight Super Bowls? Well, they did. And they lost all four of them. The first of the four was the closest match. Their kicker, Scott Norwood, had a chance to kick a Super Bowl winning field goal in the dying seconds of the game. The attempt was from 47 yards out, so it wasn't a gimme by any means. Norwood sent the ball sailing right of the goalpost. It was one of the most devastating defeats in Super Bowl history. The Bills, led by Jim Kelly, continued to dominate during the regular season, but every time they managed to reach the Super Bowl, they fell flat on their faces again and again and again. They lost to the Giants, the Redskins, and then the Cowboys twice in a row. The Bills haven't made it back to the Super Bowl since. No one felt the pain worse than Scott Norwood. But rules are rules and the Bills just couldn't put together a win when it mattered most. Speaking of rules, you will be shocked when I tell you about one of the substances that we found out has been banned by the NFL. Turns out, on the list of banned NFL substances, deer antler velvet is included. What the hell, seriously? Yup. In ancient Chinese medicine, hunters would remove the antlers from deer and make medicine out of it. It sounds peculiar, but apparently the stuff contains a high level of a growth hormone in it called IGF-1. Believe it or not, Ray Lewis was accused of using a deer antler spray when he was recovering from an injury before he won the 2013 Super Bowl. Lewis denies the claims. Good thing the NFL is protecting those deer from getting hunted for NFL medicine. We all know that the NFL doesn't care about animals. They've been killing hundreds of thousands of cows in the name of footballs. It takes 3,000 cows every single season to supply the NFL with footballs. That is because each team uses 11,000 footballs per season. 76 footballs are used in the Super Bowl alone. And we're not even mentioning all the footballs that get sold to the public. Holy cow, that's a lot of leather. Footballs aren't the only thing that the NFL runs through quickly. Their employee turnover rate is insane. The average length of an NFL career is extremely short. On average, these guys play in the league for 3.3 years. Some guys play way longer, but so many guys work their whole life to get into the league and only stay there for a game or two. 
I guess it makes sense why former coach Jerry Glanville declared that the NFL stands for not for long. Three years? That's gotta be one of the shortest careers of any profession. What do these guys do after retirement? The unfortunate reality is that a lot of NFL players aren't financially educated to hold on to the money that they receive during their NFL careers, especially those who don't have the luxury of playing for very long. Sports Illustrated wrote an article in 2015 that estimated that 78% of NFL football players face serious financial hardships after retirement, and close to 17% file for bankruptcy at some point. It's surprising when you see the salaries that these guys get paid. But after taxes, spending, and short career spans, it's really not all that surprising. It almost makes you wonder if all the pain and hardships are worth even pursuing an NFL career at all. The reason many choose to play football typically isn't just about the money. It is often because of their passion and love for the game. Could you imagine being cheered on by thousands of people while playing the game you love? One particularly passionate fan base is the Green Bay Packers. They love their team so much that you couldn't get season tickets to their games even if you wanted to. And neither could your kids, or their kids. Believe it or not, the Packers have a waiting list for season tickets that will go 1,000 years into the future. So maybe you could get your great, 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 great... You get my point. Just wild how passionate some of these fan bases are. It's why we love the game. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you learned a few things you didn't already know about the NFL. Click on the other video showing up on your screen to see more great NFL-related content just like this.